in terms of the legislature, uh, and I think I've heard you say before that it, it, it's really, it's not a partisan issue really so much as it is a, in some respects an urban rural kind of issue, like support, uh, the strength oh. of, one, of, one, of a politician's support for gun rights. Yes, there's definitely a correlation uh, across party lines between urban rural in, in terms of the willingness of legislators to stand behind Second Amendment issues and say, yeah, you're a good citizen, you know, you've got rights, and this is one of them, you know. Uh, it, it is far more uh, of a urban rural than a Republican Democrat. I mean, until last year, all of our bills were passed under Democrat control. So, um, so in terms of, uh, I mean, like, there was some, there was a lot of skepticism about uh, Speaker Harwell to start with. Uh, mm -hmm. How how has she performed on, on these issues, and how do you, you view her at this point going into this session, like with with the well, concerns that you have? Speaker Harwell is has a long voting history up there, and we can look at it, and we know exactly where she is on Second Amendment issues, and it's not good. You know, it may be that she's catering to what her constituents want, and if that's what's happening, that's fine, but she has not historically been a legislator that would vote in support of constitutional rights under the Second Amendment. She might like the other ones, but she doesn't like that one, just based on her voting record. And, you know, keep in mind that last year, with 66 or 64 House members, and there were some modest bills proposed that had been promised would pass, like the parking lot bill. <clears throat> Republicans had 64 votes. She was in charge. It could have passed easily. And instead it died in a subcommittee because I believe that's what they were told to do with it. 